Pembroke Park, Florida, Kathleen Gross and Tate was asked by Dewey's unique Paul, who was a close friend she grew up with in Jamaica, to watch her daughter Tiffany Eunuch for the evening. Kathleen agreed and her and her son Lionel went and picked her up. Then she took them shopping to pick up a few things, then brought her back to her place where she cooked them dinner. After they finished eating, both of the children went into the living room to watch TV and Kathleen decided she was going to go to bed since she had National Guard duty the next day. So she went upstairs, got dressed in her night clothes, and went to sleep. But as she was up there for a while, she heard a lot of commotion going on downstairs. So she yelled to them to be quiet, but didn't leave her room to go check on them. About 40 minutes later, her son Lionel walks upstairs and goes into a room and tells her something is wrong with Tiffany. She's not breathing. So she immediately jumps out the bed and frantically runs downstairs to discover Tiffany lying on the ground, bleeding from her mouth and unconscious. Now Kathleen works as a state trooper, so she immediately dials 911 and begins CPR until the paramedics arrive. As they are waiting, Kathleen asks her son what happened to her. And what he told his mom he did to her would definitely blow your mind. What's up, my beautiful people? Welcome and welcome back to the Mysterious Black Bandit. We are getting closer and closer to that 10K family. So make sure you watch my previous video so you have a chance to win something. Oh yeah, and let me say this. If you have been rocking with your boy from the start, let me start off by saying thank you so much I, I really appreciate you guys and once we hit that 10k i promise you i will show you how grateful i am all right family with that being said go ahead and reach over there and hit that like button for your boy then go ahead and subscribe if you're new to this channel and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss out on any of these videos and once you've done that Let's get back to this thing. On July 28, 1999, Kathleen Tate was supposed to be watching after her friend's daughter, Tiffany Eunuch, for the night. But after they finished their dinner, she decided to go upstairs to get some rest for work tomorrow and left Tiffany and her son Lionel downstairs to watch TV. At first, they were both just sitting on the couch watching WWE, but all of a sudden, Lionel decided he wanted to practice some of the wrestling moves he'd seen his idol, The Rock, perform on Tiffany. Now, Lionel weighed up to 170 pounds at that time and Tiffany was around 48 pounds, a third of his size, so she definitely wasn't a match for him. But this didn't matter to him. He lifted her frail body into the air and slammed her with all his might onto the living room table. As she was lying on the floor screaming and crying, Lionel decided to drop his knees on her, then began to kick and stump her all over her body. With all that impact coming down on her, she began bleeding and gasping for air. But instead of him going to get his mother, he decided to sit back down on the couch to finish watching his TV show. After a few minutes or so, he noticed that Tiffany was no longer breathing, and this is when he decided to run upstairs to alert his mom. As he walks into her room, he tells her that he had put her in a headlock, and as she was squirming trying to get away, she smashed her head on the side of the table. Then he tells her that before she stopped breathing, she was just rolling around on the floor, crying and acting like a and urinated in her pants. So Kathleen rushes downstairs to check and see if she has a pulse, but when she knows she didn't have one, she performs CPR and calls the ambulance. Now allegedly, before the paramedics and police arrived, Kathleen had a conversation with Lionel to try to protect himself from being locked up and also cleaned up the girl's blood with bleach. Once the paramedics arrived, Tiffany's lifeless body was just lying there on the floor with vomit all over her clothes and blood coming out of her mouth, so they immediately rushed her to the hospital. Seconds later, officers arrived to collect evidence and allegedly Kathleen seen that one of her couch pillows still had some of Tiffany's blood on it, so she grabs that pillow and flips it over. Then the officers questioned Kathleen and Lionel about the incident and they said that they were just playing around when he innocently picked her up, swung her around, and accidentally hit her her head against the corner of the table. Now shortly after arriving at the hospital, Tiffany was pronounced dead, but when they performed that autopsy on her, the results were devastating. Examiners stated that it looked like Tiffany had been brutally beat. He had over 30 injuries that included a cracked skull, a broken rib, a hemorrhaged kidney, bleeding in her brain, and multiple bruises and abrasions on her face and other body parts. They said that one blow was so severe that it detached her liver. A experts stated that this violent beating had to last up to at least five minutes and her injuries were equal in force to a fall from a three-story building. Now after some investigating, it was discovered that Lionel was a pretty intelligent boy with an average IQ and a lot of street smart. But he was no angel and this wasn't his first time showing problems with violence. In fact, prior to this event, he had been suspended from school 15 times because of behavioral problems that included stealing, lying, and fighting. 
Now in 2001, Lionel Tate finally went on trial for the death of Tiffany Unit. Prosecutors didn't believe that there was intent or premeditation in her murder, but because of the aggravated abuse, the case fell under felony murder, which determined that he would be tried as an adult for first degree murder. Now his attorney tried to argue that the only reason Lionel killed Tiffany was because his love for professional wrestling. He said that it was not his fault that Tiffany was killed. In fact, it was the World Wrestling Federation's fault and Lionel should be pitied and not punished. But there was so much evidence that suggested that Lionel knew exactly what he had done was wrong. For example, when the police came to arrest him, he claimed that all he did was give Tiffany a bear hug. But then he later confessed that he tried to throw her onto the couch but missed and threw her onto the banister of the stairs. Now when Tiffany's mother took the stand, she testified that when she told Lionel that her daughter was dead, he just shrugged his shoulders and rolled his eyes. Then the very next day, he asked her if he could live with her and have Tiffany's toys. She also felt that Kathleen should be held accountable as well because she knew of her son's extensive bullying behavior but yet she chose to lie down in another room and left her child along with Lionel who was twice her age and three times her size. Then on top of that, she allegedly tried to cover up everything that happened that day. Now, although Lionel's attorney tried to paint the picture as him being this innocent little boy and also arranging for the media to cover this nationwide for sympathy, the judge refused to reduce Lionel Tate's first degree murder conviction. Now, after several days, the prosecution did offer Lionel a plea deal to a lesser charge of second degree murder in which he would have only had to serve three years in prison and 10 years probation, but Lionel and his mother turned it down. Kathleen felt very confident about her son being innocent on first degree murder and had very high hopes on him being acquitted, but this wasn't the case. It took the jury up to two weeks of deliberation to come back with the verdict, and he was found guilty of first degree felony murder, which carried out a mandatory sentence of life imprisonment without a chance of parole. As the verdict was given, Lionel sat there with a blank stare on his face, seemingly unable to comprehend his fate, but once he heard his mother sobbing, tears began to roll down his cheeks as he was handcuffed and led out to courtroom. After his conviction, many people and even the prosecutor didn't even agree with the sentencing and pleaded for leniency. But the judge told the prosecution that if they did not believe that he should have received a harsh sentence, they should have never charged him with first degree murder. Now by 2003, an appeal was filed on Lionel's behalf and the court decided to give him another chance. So they threw out his conviction on the basis that he wasn't given a mental competency hearing prior to his trial. He then took the plea deal that he was initially given and pleaded guilty to second degree murder. Now, since he had already served in a juvenile facility for three years, he was given credit for that, which allowed him to only have to serve one year of house arrest, 10 years probation, and a thousand hours community service and mandatory counseling. By January of 2004, after serving just a few more months, Lionel was finally released with a monetary device attached to his ankle. Now you would think that being locked up for that long and at that age, he would finally learn something. But unfortunately, he didn't stay on track for long. Just nine months after being released, he was discovered by the police outside his home with a knife, which was a violation of his probation. But instead of just locking him up again, the judge added five more years to his probation and told him that if he violates his parole one more time, he was going back to prison. But for some reason, that warning didn't do anything for Lionel because just a few months later, he was in trouble once again. In May of 2005, he was charged with armed robbery, armed burglary with battery, and violating his parole in connection with the robbery of a piece of man at gunpoint. In court, Lionel told the judge that he was hearing voices and wanted to get rid of himself, so this time he was ordered to have a psychiatric evaluation, but after that was done, he was found competent to stand trial. So in May of 2006, when the trial started, his lawyer claimed that his mother was the reason for many of his childhood and adult problems. He stated that his mother has made one bad decision after another. He continued and said Lionel's mother knew of the mental issues he's had, but yet she still left a gun in the home in which adult Lionel was later accused of stealing and using in the robbery. But none of this was going to help Lionel with his hearing. After he pled guilty to gun possession and violated his probation again, the judge told him, you have run out of second chances and then sentenced Lionel to 30 years imprisonment. Then in February of 2008, he pled no contest to the robbery charge and was sentenced to another 10 years on top of that 30. 
As of today, Lionel is currently serving his time in the South Bay Correctional Facility in Florida and will be 42 years old when he becomes eligible for parole in January 2031. And that will bring this video to an end, my good people, and what a crazy story this was. I don't know if y'all remember, but Dave Chappelle had this in one of his comedy shows, but after reading and researching this, I'm not sure what I would have wanted. But I do know what Tiffany's mother wanted. She felt that the only reason Lionel's sentence was so lenient because Lionel's mother was a state trooper and was working with them. So, what do y'all think about this one? Lionel was the youngest person to ever receive a life sentence, but after listening to this story, do y'all believe that that was the right move, or do you think that he should have received some type of psychiatric help? Well, y'all let me know down in the comments. Alright family, I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and hit that like, then subscribe to my channel, and turn those notification bells on. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, stay mysterious my friends.